Hello and welcome to the tutorial number two from the Paddles game. And what we're going to cover in this tutorial is section number two, known as game design. And let's go into that right now. Alright, so this section will show you the most important part of the game development, the design process. You should never jump into a coding the game without any thought or design behind the process. You will need to sit down and make a few pages of notes and stuff like that in order to do the game appropriately. What kind of graphics you want, what type of game it needs to be, and stuff like that. How complex, how many more aspects need to be covered before you go into the coding need to be looked at before you even start the coding process. So how the game works. The goal of this game is mainly teaching a lesson than more complex game. This is indeed a Pong clone which has been done too many times to count but it should be the first game for any new developer should create. The bottom line is do not jump to an amazing game that will have hours of gameplay as your first game. Make a very simple game that you can do in an hour or less, then start that go from there. I made this mistake by my, myself. I wanted to jump into a 3D game a few years ago, and then I never finished it. Then I wanted to jump into a huge 2D game, I never finished that. And then I just built from basic games up until I've made some pretty complex games. So start small and expand from there. This game does just that, so let's just begin designing it. Now the story should always be the first thing you look at, because you may want, you may have some idea of what game you want, like an FPS, but when you sit down and think of a story, you might decide a different game type will be different. Now, a Pong game with a story, no, but this should always be the first thing you will design. The story should morph into a game, not the other way around. You shouldn't start designing the game and then a few weeks into the design process you say, okay, we need a story. You should do the story, or get some idea of the story. You don't have to do the full story right away. You just get some idea of where you want to go with the game and see if that will change your idea on the game type. Now for games like this and Tetris and all the basic stuff, they won't have stories so you can skip this part of the design process. Now the second is gameplay ideas. This is not the full gameplay lookup, but more of an idea. So basic things you should think about of what camera view will be top down or side scroller in 2D or full 3D and what view will that 3D take. What should be visible? Like, what object should be visible? Will there be invisible characters? Or will there be stuff outside the screen that you'll need to interact with? Will there be buildings, items, and or weapons? All three? Or just one of those? Or two of those? How about exploration? Do you want to have a full user-controlled exploration where they can wait to do tasks or have it a complete go on to the next task right away. Now this game is too basic to break down into multiple design process of the gameplay. So in the first major game tutorial, a space RPG that will probably be game number four or five, we will discuss this a lot more. Now that game will probably be like 60 tutorials long. This section of the gameplay design will let you know what art you need for the game. Like a top-down I am 100% sure I'll need a top-down 2D. I can get somebody to go make 2D art right now so I can finish my design process. I know it's going to be a 3D game so I can get somebody to do 3D models. Now that's a good idea. For this game you do not need a team. For next game you do not need a team. For probably about, depending on how quickly you want to advance, the first 5 to 10 games you will not need a team. 
unless you're comfortable doing everything by yourself, you should get a team as you get into more complex games. Now that you've got an idea of what art and all the stuff you need, you can finish the gameplay ideas. Now this game is too basic to split it up, so you already pretty much have the basic understanding of what Pawn is, and you can get the gameplay from that. So let's discuss the gameplay elements. Two paddles, one will be user controlled and the other will be computer controlled. Poor artificial intelligence, this is your first game, we do not need amazing artificial intelligence yet. The ball starts in the middle of the screen, picks a random angle, and moves right away. The ball increases speed after every hit until it reaches its max speed. That way it will make it harder for you and the computer to keep up. You know, make it a little more challenging. Rectangular, rectangular collision detection. It is very poor, but the easiest collision detection for beginners. Computer paddle will not move while the ball is headed in the player's direction. If the ball passes a paddle, the paddle's controller gets a point. The person that last hit the ball will get a point. So if you hit it and it passes the computer's paddle, you will get the point. When the computer reaches a certain score, the player loses. And when the player reaches that same score, the computer loses and you win. For games like this, the above style of gameplay ideas is fine. However, when you get into larger projects, you will need a design document, which we'll get into on the Space RPG. Finally, the artwork. If you already have a team, good for you. If not, you can design it yourself. And this is where you need to do it. I've left out some stuff like audio and video if you wish to have movies in the game, but this game will have no audio and video, so we're keeping the basic game design process very simple for now. So, for our artwork in this game, we'll only take about 15 seconds, depending on what you have and what, how detailed you want it to be, which shouldn't be very detailed because it's your first game. So, what I decided to do for this game was create a single pixel, so that'll only take about 5 seconds to create. Now, other games will require a very long time to finish, so you should try your best to get a team after a few fa few basic games if you wish to continue game development. Now, the single pixel, you can use Photoshop or any other, any other image editing software you want. You can even use Paint, and I'll show you that now. So, if you wish to use Paint, you get the first thing you notice in paint is a base, a big white background and then you just drag the diagonal as far as it can go and then you have a single pixel and you can save that as a PNG. So that's all you have to do for paint. And that's all you need to do for the game. We're only going to be using a single pixel. Now, part two of the game design process will be a game graph. Here is a basic game loop. Now, X and I doesn't follow this 100%. It does some... Sometimes it calls the update method twice, or three times before it calls the draw method, but you get the idea. We need to update the input, what keys are pressed on the keyboard, what keys are pressed on... or what buttons are pressed on the gamepad, and what buttons are pressed on the mouse if you wish to add mouse support. Then we need to update the game objects, according to that, and then update graphics. So, let's discuss the update game objects and graphics part in depth. We'll need to do quite a bit of stuff in this area. We need to update our objects based on the input, or time, if it is computer controlled. We should apply